Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Thank you, Lord. Send the stage for your presence, Lord Jesus. Come on. Come on, come on. I need you, Lord. Hi, Candice. How you doing? Ooh, girl, we're talking about compassionate communication today. I'm just setting the stage right now for the Holy Spirit to come in. Thank you, sis. This is a song by Jonathan Butler uh, called We Need You, Lord. You just sit in meditation with me, please. Mm. Thinking about first coming with the spirit of gratitude and thankfulness to be able to come together once again. Well, thank you, Lord, for knitting me together with Candace. She's such a beautiful soul, and I thank you, Lord, for her heart. She just really shines your light. So giving and thoughtful. Mm, thank you, Lord. Bless her hands, Lord God, everything she touches. And her daughters, too. Increase in them, Lord God. More compassion, Lord. More compassion. More love. We bow our knees. I can tell I'm going to be crying. So, got my tissue. Right now. Candace, we have a guest coming this evening. Her name is, um, is this too loud? Let me turn it down. I'm, you know, I'm learning all this stuff. So, um, her name is Dr. Shermel. Shermel Williams. She is a licensed marriage family therapist. And um, we decided, we've been talking about self-care matters. And in our last discussion, there was a lot that came up. And so we thought, hey, let's take it self-care to a deeper level. And talk about how do we care for ourselves and the way we communicate. The way we communicate with others, the way we communicate with ourselves. Are we speaking compassionately? And figuring out how to respond in a way that is compassionate without losing our ground. So, tell me how you're doing, sis. Thank you for those prayer hands. Yes, appreciate you. I still remember when we first met and my birthday, and it was so kind. And you even went back and got me cupcakes. I'm sorry, Misty, because you. I didn't even know I had so much going on that day, but when you told me that, my heart was just so touched. Hi, Henry. Nice to see you. I'm so glad you could make it. Yes, yes. Let's send the tone right now for the Holy Spirit to come in. Did it wave at you? I said wave. <laughs> for the Holy Spirit to come in and um, be with us invite an invitation for the Holy Spirit to be with us. This is a serious conversation that we're going to have about compassionate communication and earlier today and even this week there's been things going on. Um, oh yes, well I'm glad you received the prayer. God bless you sis. God is good. Hi Shermel. Yes, come on in girl. Let's, let's add that Shermel to this thing. God always has a way of um, blessing us even when we don't know and we don't expect it. So you must be able to return it back to you. Okay? So we have three here. Three said, Thank you. I'm glad you did. So Henry is um, the founder and writer. Hi, Henry. Hey. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. Can you hear my song playing? No. Okay. I heard it um I heard it before I came on live. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was I was playing for everyone um the song We Need You Lord by Jonathan Butler and inviting God, the Holy Spirit to come into the room and to be here with us because we've been talking for the past two months since uh, we started in, did we start in May? 
Mm-hmm. I, I believe so. You know these days. Yes, they're yes, we did. We started in May because it was Mental Health Month. Yes. yes. And in Mental Health Month, we wanted to acknowledge uh, mental health awareness and bring some compassion and understanding to um to people and Shermel and I just have started talking and we started talking about self-care. Yes. And then from there we continue to talk about self-care the following month because we were so full and had so much. And we've continued and we decided to delve in a little deeper, dig a little deeper to self-care and talking about communication and being compassionate. So we thank you all for being here. I thank you, Shermel, for being a guest here with Love and Lightens. Um, just to let everybody know out there, my name is Angel. I am the creative visionary and founder of Love and Lightens. We are a business organization, service, and products to share messages of love to enlighten the soul. And uh, that's certainly what we have here today is a message of love to enlighten the soul. And if you're interested Booyaka! Get yourself a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a hoodie that says Love Enlightens, and we have more merch coming up with our heaven to heart, heart to hand written affirmations to promote spiritual, emotional wellness. We believe that God is the creator of all, creator of all humanity, and because of that, because God is love, and we are made in the likeness and image of God, we too are emanations of God. We are emanations of, of love. And that is the greatest seed and the, one of the best things for us to know. That is the truth that is our foundation and we root everything back to it. Anything else that tries to steal it, kill it, or destroy it, we're going to rebuke it. Okay? <laughs> so that is me. That's Love and Light. Thank you for being here and that we have that synergy. I want to introduce to you my uh, our special guest, Shermel Williams. She is a licensed marriage family therapist and the uh, proprietor of Bittersweet Encounters. She has her own practice. She is a guest speaker and a motivational speaker um, with uh, for psychology, she has been with Psychology Today and other platforms. Uh, we both are Christian women. And so you may hear us go in and out and talk about God, the Bible, verses, and things of that nature. So please stick with us and, and listen for the nuggets that are going to be true and good for you. Because uh, there's always something in every message that we can glean from. Even if you hear something that may not sit with your spirit so well, ask God, what is it that you would have me to know? Especially since she spent this time here. So thank you. Shermel? Hi there. Thank you again for having me, um, Angel. I appreciate the invitation and the opportunity to be here tonight to talk about compassionate communication. Um, I think, you know, you and I, we were having a conversation and, you know, mm -hmm. just talking randomly and um, this topic came up. And so, um, so yeah, I'm just excited to be here tonight. I welcome all the viewers. Um, I am learning how to be uh, live savvy. So uh, if I don't acknowledge you, um, you know, or respond, please forgive me, charge it to my head and not my heart, um, but I'm learning. So welcome everybody, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for extending that welcome. Yes, thank you all for being here. We are here not for each other. Yes. So we're grateful to have you to be here, a part of the community and sharing this time together. And um, I, too, am learning how to do this. This is the third one. So please bear with us, and we're all growing and learning together, right? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I do want to ground this communication a little bit tonight. Mm -hmm. um, one thing for sure is uh, we're talking about compassionate communication uh, I don't want us to get off on offenses and talking about how what offense what offenses have occurred. We want to keep this space uh, a space for love, for healing, for compassion. And so we want that synergy to permeate and to be where we're going to and to be our center focal point. Okay, if we know that there's offense and this is going to bring things up for us, but be focused on compassionate is what we're going to stick with 
okay? So I put something out earlier saying that um, we're going to be focusing on how to listen attentively with compassion, how to respond with compassion, and how to maintain your integrity with compassion, okay? So with that, um, I would like to say, Shamel, would you like to add something there? Yeah, I guess we can um, jump right on in, right? And, and, and Let's kind of jump right talk, on in. Jump right on in and kind of talk about what compassionate communication is. Um, yes. So essentially, it's just a way of thinking and, and speaking that acknowledges, like, um, you know, our shared aspects of human experience, you know, really just having that understanding and the sameness, you know, rather than the differences. So it's more so about being supportive of one another as opposed to being judgmental, right? Um, yes. Yeah, and so it's a it's a um, compassionate communication is actually a practice. It's something that we have to work at because, truth be told, you know, um, societally maybe um, familial, you know, in our, our upbringing, we haven't been taught how to uh, communicate com compassionately. Um, I think our primary way of communication is probably aggressive, um, where we become a defensive, um, we, you know, we, and, and aggression, aggressive uh, communication doesn't necessarily mean that you are using vulgar language or, you know, that it's your tone of voice, but it could simply be blaming, you know, you do this or you never do that, or you always do this or, that kind of thing. And so when you come off in that way, communication, the person on the opposite end is automatically going to go into, into defense mode, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because I don't know about you, but if somebody's blaming me for something, I'm going to want to defend myself. And this is That's why right. a lot of times people, I've heard people say, including myself, you know, I'm speaking to this person, but they don't seem to be listening. Well, my my reply or my response back to you is, how are you communicating to them? Are you blaming them for something? Because if you are blaming them for something, then yes, they have absolutely not heard anything that you said. Because mentally, what they have done now is they're trying to figure out a way to defend themselves. And most times it comes across as their brain goes to the Rolodex of their memory and they're trying to find something that you did that, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. was offensive to them, right? And yes. so while their brain is in that memory of Rolodex, they haven't mm -hmm. heard a thing you've said. And so mm -hmm. this may be why you feel like you're communicating and someone's not listening. I would yeah. just employ you to check and see how you're communicating. If you yeah. use words like always, never, you don't, you know, just starting off with the word you, you know, um, mm. is a clear indication that you're communicating aggressively. The opposite of that is compassion, you know, um, and compassion is a little more vulnerable than uh, aggressive, right? Um, yes. Aggressive can also be uh, a form of protection for us, right? We we may communicate that way to protect ourselves, to build this shield around ourselves, so that we aren't hurt and that we um we aren't allowing people to kind of hurt our feelings, right? And so, um, but compassionate communication, kind of more so, uh, it, it talks about. Um, you're expressing how you feel about certain things, you know, like if Angel, if you said something to me um, that made me feel a certain way, um, I could either get angry at you and I can, you know, become defensive or I can say, you know, when you did this, it made me feel this way, mm -hmm. right? That's a little more, yeah. you know, more compassionate, right? It's not as That's aggressive. Right. It's it's, it's yeah. exposing how your behavior made me feel, not causing you to be the blame of how I'm feeling. Does that make sense? That's right. So that's, right. that's what co um, compassionate communication is. And mm -hmm. not only, so I'm, I'm speaking about communicating with other people, but there's also this mm -hmm. element of being compassionate when we're communicating with ourselves. You know, you said something right. earlier. Um, I watched, I didn't get a chance to watch it all, but you said you were looking at yourself in the camera 
and you were staring at your inner critic. Your inner critic was having, was telling you all kinds of things, right? Yes. And so um, you had to learn how to be compassionate with yourself and communicate compassionately with yourself. And I really want to hone in on that because I feel like the more we're able to engage in self-compassion, self-love, mm -hmm. self, um, you know, self-compassion, the better a person we are, the better we can serve, the better we can love. Because if we're, if we just think about it, all yeah. the things that we entertain in our mind and our brain from the inner critic, imagine you telling that to somebody else and how low they would feel about themselves mm -hmm. right imagine yeah. how imagine how they would feel if you were just spewing out all this negative stuff to them they would yeah. feel so low they would probably be super depressed super frustrated super angry well it's no different than th that's that's what's happening when we entertain our inner critic and we're not compassionate with ourselves and mm -hmm. so then we're not able to show up in the world full of the love that we were created by nature right um, we were created god is love we were created by him we are his creation so we were actually created to love and to serve him. Yes. and so yes. if we can just master self-love and self-compassion I think the yeah. world would be so much, would be a better, better, better place to be in. Much um, better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I was thinking about that. And, and love is something we are always asking and everyone is saying they're looking for, they're yearning. Um, but it's really been a question that I've had is, is love something that people are thinking that they just receive? Or, you know, are they being consciously aware about how they give it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that giving and receiving is an exchange. Yeah. You just mm -hmm. can't say, or have we defined love so narrowly that we're not able to actually feel or have love, embrace love when it is coming to us? Yeah. I like to say love is a state of being. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we equate love with doing because I'm doing this for you, or because I'm doing that for you, then that equates to I love you. But mm -hmm. if we are love, and we're a human being, yes, it's just being. And we have to learn how to be who we yeah. were created to be. And from mm -hmm. that place will flow love, you know, so it's a state of being it's it's it That's really funny. is just being love. It just, it's a state of being. So it's not necessarily in what we do because we can do things for people but in our hearts we don't love them we can be doing things for people for numerous reasons we can be doing it because we have an expectation for them to do it back to us or give back to us or what have you but love is just a state it's just being just being who you were authentically uh created to be and yeah. and in order to be who you were authentically created to be, you have to love yourself. You have to silence that critic that's telling you all the things that you're not and start yeah. to really embrace the things that you are and who God said you are, that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, you know, that you, you know, that you're beautiful and it, it flaws and all, you know what I mean? Um, so it really is a state of being and not so much in what we do, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. And I think that is also why love and minds is so important because it is to tell people you are love. You know, I'm not sure. I think we're healing love. We're in a mm -hmm. state when we're healing love and we're healing our humanity because we're not even closer. We're disjointed from one another. Yes. Yes. I, I like to read something that um, before we got started, I was praying and, you know, looking at things. And I um, I have a concordance, an exhaustive concordance, the strong exhaustive concordance. A concordance is, um, it's like a dictionary of the Bible word. So mm -hmm. every word, I looked up the word compassion. So the word compassion has come up 
I don't know, so, so however so many times, right? Uh, but I, what I noticed as I was reading this is it kept saying he was moved with compassion and with compassion they did. So compassion being at gracious and full of compassion, being full of compassion, had no compassion upon the young man um, for he had compassion. I, I will have compassion. So what I'm being led to say is that compassion is a part of mercy, it's a part of grace, and it's a part of that seeing ourselves in one another and having that connection with God, to know that God is love. Mm -hmm. And then we start to understand ourselves. We've been singular, but then we have God and we start bringing God into our relationship and learning. And thinking about the parable of the, um, the man who didn't want to forgive mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and when he didn't want to forgive god had or the the king had compassion on that um i'm going to say i'm just going to say boss and then he went out but he was still a servant right mm -hmm. so the king forgave him but then when he went out he saw his servant he did not forgive him and it was of a lesser offense so we're talking about offenses but is grounded in compassion. So he beat him up. <laughs> and then it said, it said the people were greatly disturbed and the streets started talking and it got back to the king. And the king was like, bring him to me. Mm -hmm. How could you do this? And likewise, that the parable is for us to understand that God is saying, I'm merciful, I'm graceful to you. I know you're flawed, I know you error. Mm -hmm. it's okay I love you I'm going to forgive you of that offense mm -hmm. and you may go freely mm -hmm. and then with that God wants us to freely forgive other people mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I think so this goes back to like you know I'm just thinking when you say that and this is why it's difficult for us is because at an early age we were taught in order to be accepted we had to perform we had to do yeah. something right um, yeah. And so I think, you know, the way our school system is set up, just the way a, a lot of things are set up, it's performance based. Right. And so then mm -hmm. we take on this idea and this belief that in order to be loved and in order to be accepted, I must do something. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that we are loved just because we are the creation of God. Right. We are, we right. are created in his image and in his likeness and if he is love then that means that we are love too right that's so, right um and so but this performance based mentality teaches us that we have to do 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 right and then mm -hmm. we don't do um you know we're always striving to do and to to per be perfect and all of that and which is unattainable right and so that makes right. you frustrated and so sometimes you do things in hopes that you get a certain response mm -hmm. and when you don't get that response then you kind of sort of beat yourself up like man i've done everything and i'm still not getting the response that i'm looking for i'm still not getting what it is that i'm looking for um, and so I think we just have to understand that we are love just because we exist, just because we exist. Right. Yes. Um, yes. And from that place, you know, um, we can start to begin to silence that inner critic and, and tell that inner critic, you know, hey, I'm not entertaining what you have to say because I am love. You know, I'm human. Right. We, we, there's a human element of us, right? We're, mm -hmm. And so we're flawed. You know, we're going to make mistakes. And, and our creator and our father already knows this. And he's not holding that against us, right? Um, yes. So I like to say, who are we to hold ourselves against? Who, who are we, right? Um, yeah. And so... But I do want to kind of um, give some practical ways that, because we've been talking about the inner critic, I do want to give some practical ways of how to mm -hmm. kind of start to exercise some self-compassion for yourself. Um, That's right. You know, 
one of the one of the tools that I like to make mention is um, it's called like what would you say to a friend, right? Mm. Okay. So um, if you have a if you're in a situation and something happens and your inner critic is just going going ham on you, going in on you, right? Um, and you are entertaining it and you're like, oh my gosh, like, let's just say, you know, you got any up uh, an evaluation and the evaluation had some areas that you needed to improve. So you start telling yourself, oh, you know, you, why didn't you do better? You, you know, all the negative things, why didn't you do better? You knew you could have did done better. Um, you know, sometimes people critics go as far as to tell them that they're stupid, you know, they don't, they're not smart enough, all of these things. And so I would say when that inner critic starts going in, ask yourself if a friend was in this exact same situation, if a friend got a performance evaluation, same as yours, everything's the same, what would you say to that person? If they start mm. feeling really down on themselves, what would you say to that that person? That's you right. Know, more times than not, you're not going to tell them all the things that you're telling yourself. You're probably right. going to tell them, you know what, you're you you're good at what you do. You know, don't beat yourself up. You know, it's only a performance evaluation. Let's look at all the things that you know are positive. You're going to encourage them. You're going to say things that are encouraging to lift them up, right? Yes. So when you are in those situations where you find yourself just kind of um, really um, speaking negatively towards yourself, just stop and ask yourself, what would you say to a friend? And whatever that is, you turn around and say it to yourself, mm -hmm. right? Um and that's a form of self-compassion. You're being compassionate. You're allowing yourself to be human. You're allowing yourself to be flawed. You're allowing yourself to not be perfect, right? Um, so that's one practical way that you can begin to, um, to kind of silence that inner critic and start to engage in some, some self-compassion. You, you were going to say something? Yeah, that, that kind of... Because you're saying sometimes would be the way we talk to ourselves, and sometimes the way we talk to ourselves is so harshly. And I thought about how in our last session we talked about core beliefs. Yes. So if your core belief system is faulty, yes, then other things are faulty, and you're still playing those out. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, so, from your core belief, and it's core because mm -hmm. it's deep, right? And most times yeah. we don't know what our core belief is. It's deep down yes. the core, and so the way that you can kind of get to your core belief is look at the thoughts that you're having. What are mm -hmm. the things that you're thinking and speaking about, you know, to yourself, mm -hmm. you know, yes. um, if someone's automatic thought, you know, let's say, I don't know, let's say you're walking down the street and somebody uh, looks at you and frowns, you know, if your automatic thought is, Oh my gosh, they, they, they don't like me then that lets me know that there's something in you that makes you feel like you're unlovable, you're unlikable, if that's your automatic thought. Because there's, there's a million other thoughts that you could have based upon yeah. this person frowning, right? Maybe they can be having mm -hmm. a bad day. Maybe, you, yeah. know, they, you know, it. but it doesn't have to be anything about you. But if that's your first and automatic thought, it's a clear indication that there's something faulty in you that you go, that's, that, that that becomes your first thought about yourself, yeah. you know? Because mm -hmm. there's many other reasons why this person can be frowning, and it really doesn't, it may not even have anything to do with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be emotional PTSD, and, um, you know, it, it, that's a whole other thing with not taking things personal, but, but learning. But when, I want to, this being also compassion, is that, when we have the awareness that we're starting to blame ourselves or even quickly deflect and start to blame someone else to be pulled off, take a breath, you know, fill our bodies. And if we're becoming tense and things and, and just do a self check-in, do yeah. a check-in, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes when you're, when you're feeling like you mentioned that defensiveness, 
you know, you could go boom right into somebody else's and, you know, it's startling. So I, I want to share this before I forget is a form of um, compassionate communication. It's not passive. It's not aggressive. Mm -hmm. It's assertive. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody is saying something, you can say, we can't control any, anybody else's actions and how they do or treat us. But talking, you know, about self-care and self-love, we can say, you know what? That doesn't feel good to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's going on here. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, stop. Yes. You know, this is, this is too much. And there is a power. When people talk about giving your power away, it is when we're expecting people to read our minds and we haven't articulated mm -hmm. how we need to be treat, treat me. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be kind and compassionate to you, I expect it back. Yeah. And even if you're not going to be kind and compassionate towards me, then I could say, okay, God bless you. I love you and peace out. Because I'm not going to change my integrity. Mm -hmm. Accommodate. Mm -hmm. You know, all these other things. So maybe you, it's so much is going on right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like popping off, popping off, popping off. So it's like this whole thing of wanting to bring in compassion mm -hmm. for ourselves and also extensive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, you said something. So when we communicate pa compassionately, we're communicating not from our feelings, but we're communicating from our heart. Right. So we, we have many different feelings and I don't know about you, but you know, feelings can change like, in the blink of an eye, right? And so if we're communicating off of our feelings, um, we, we really shouldn't be doing a whole lot off of our feelings because they're just feelings, right? Mm -hmm. And because they come from our thoughts. And sometimes we have such irrational thoughts that our feelings then too become irrational because that's where they come from. And mm -hmm. so that's why we should not always be so quick to respond based upon how we feel because it they're just feelings. It doesn't mean that this is true. I, I, I'm sure somebody can, can attest to this. You may have said something to somebody in the heat of a moment of you being angry or you being hurt or you being upset. But then once those feelings subside, you might be remorseful. You might feel embarrassed that you kind of responded that way, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's it, we have to be very careful about communicating from our feelings. And so I'd like to say that like with compassion, it's more so about identifying your feeling, right? So let's say, you know, I'm going to read an example. Um, oh. Okay. Okay. Um, compassionate is it, about stating your a request clearly. Okay, so let's say a teenager has been talking on the phone for hours and you're expecting a call, right? So when you have, so this is the situation. When you have the phone tied up for so long, other calls can't come through. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is where you express your feeling and the reason for it. So I'm feeling frustrated because I've been expecting to hear from someone. I'd like you to bring your conversation to a close. Okay. That's communicating compassionately as opposed to um, you kind of just saying, um, you're always on the phone. You know, you're, you never get off the phone or you're always on the phone. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's more of an aggressive type of way of communication. Um, mm -hmm. compassionate is more so just identifying your feelings, letting somebody know how, um, the reason for your feelings and kind of like what your request is, how, what would, what do you desire from them? Right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and this is, this is, a, this can be a little challenging for people because it does require a level of vulnerability, right? Mm -hmm. it, it requires vulnerability. I, I, you know, when you said, I'm still stuck actually a little bit when you said not communicating from our feelings, mm -hmm. I don't know how not to communicate from my feelings. Mm -hmm. And I think 
I don't really know if anybody else really does. And I think we, we, um, our feelings are a barometer, mm -hmm. like so much. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we're right still there. in that place of still even figuring out how to unravel mm -hmm. or not the, the enmeshed feelings or, or thoughts. And like you said, the, um, the mind, mm -hmm. the toxic thoughts from the mind mm -hmm. and even to, to try to be able to sort through that. So I think we're trying not to, um, I don't know how to not respond from my feelings because my feelings are to me is what's telling me, um, What's going on? Selena, my Asia, thank you for being here. Thank you all for being here. Says mm -hmm. we have to be careful which feelings we choose to express. Yeah, so it's it's a difference between, okay, okay let's say you're a situation. So there's always a situation that's going to spark a, a problem, okay? Yes. And then that thought is going to produce a feeling, Okay. I'm so sorry. You know, my dog, she is 14 and a half years old. She <laughs> sleeps most of the day. And this is actually the time we usually take a walk. So she's been walking back and forth. I need to go let her out. Keep talking to the people. I can hear you. Forgive me. I'll be right back. Keep talking to now. Okay. Um, so I was, um, I was saying that it is, um, so we, there's a situation that usually happens that, and then from that situation, we, there's a thought that comes to mind. And from that thought, we have a feeling. The point that I'm making is that we don't want to respond based upon feeling. So if a person is feeling angry, you typically the response is maybe you might, you know, cuss the person out or you might, you know, have, an, have a, uh, you might punch a wall or, you know, what have you. So that's the response from yes, Selena. You you c cognitive triangle. Yes. So so we have to be mm. careful of our response, okay? Because if our thought our thought doesn't necessarily mean that it's true, we could just be having a thought based upon our trauma. You know, that's going to come mm -hmm. to feel that way. So sometimes our thoughts can be irrational. So rather than responding from that anger, you can, you can express, you, you identify the situation and then mm -hmm. express how it's making you feel as opposed to responding from that feeling. Does okay. that make sense? Yes. Okay. So there's a situation, you identify the situation, you know, when you're on the phone, um, calls can't come through it makes me feel frustrated as opposed to responding from frustration would be you're always on the phone why can't you just get off the phone you know that's that's an emotional response mm -hmm. um being able to identify the situation and then identifying how you feel is yeah. more compassionate if that makes sense yes does that make a little more sense it does. Okay. Um, I just, I want to put a uh, make you wear seven thirty six right now, mm -hmm. and so I want you to be able to get through your points um, seven thirty seven now, and about seven forty five if we can check in with the those online. Yes. So um, this, you know, there's so much to share about this. Um, I think we're coming from the angle. I personally like to focus on. Uh, compassion, uh, compassionate communication with self, because I feel like from self, it'll naturally flow out into others. Okay, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it will genuinely flow out into others. If you can learn how to be compassionate with yourself, you're automatically going to relate to other people, and it's going to be a genuine flow of compassion to others. Um, the Bible tells us to. Um, to um oh my gosh treat our neighbors as we treat ourselves i may be quoting that wrong got it i'm paraphrasing yeah. right uh -huh. gotcha um so it 
I interpret that as we have to first, we, if we're treating ourselves harshly and it tells us to treat our, our neighbors as we're treating ourselves, we don't want to treat our neighbors harshly, right? Yeah. We want to we wanna first treat ourselves the way that we need to be treated. And then from that place, we treat our neighbors that same way. Okay. Yeah. So I think in order for it to be authentic, in order for it to be natural, we want to definitely start to learn how to be more compassionate with ourselves so that we can naturally and genuinely be compassionate towards others. So watching what you're saying to yourself, you know, silencing that inner critic, asking yourself, what would you say to a friend, you know, um, positive affirmations, all of those things um, you definitely kind of want to engage in. Um, and, and, and also, you will begin to be able, how you said, you will begin to, as you do that, you'll start to feel better about yourself. You'll start to feel valued. You'll start to feel um, worthy, you know, and all of these things. And so then that will boost your confidence, right? To where you can kind of express your needs and your desires in an assertive way and not an aggressive way, right? Um, yeah. It gives you freedom, you know. Um, there's so much freedom that comes from compassionate communication. So it increases your confidence in communication, greater understanding of one's own behaviors and that of others, right? Which leads to more peace and harmony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Improved listening skills. You're able to listen a little better, you know, um, as opposed to, you know, being, um, being, um, not present or kind of being off, you know, because now you, you're concerned, you're, you're coming from the heart, you know, you, that, that compassion play. Um, yes, right. It heightens the awareness of one's own feelings, right? You need right. preferences and then those of others. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a deepening of love and acceptance of oneself. And then that just spills out into others. Right. Um, there's so much, there's so much that comes out of uh, compassionate um, uh, communication. Uh, and definitely we want to com communicate compassionately with other people. But I, I think that we first have to start with ourselves. Of course, you can you can try to be compassionate. You can still be if you're compassionate with others, still do that. Right. But yes. work on being compassionate with yourself so that it can be effortlessly, it can flow authentically, it can flow genuinely without without striving. And then also too, without um, actually sometimes becoming resentful or bitter if someone doesn't reciprocate it back to you, okay? Because, it, because as you begin to be compassionate with yourself and you morph into this, this being of love, it's mm -hmm. going to just come natural without any expectations. Like you're, yeah. you're not going to be able to help yourself. So if somebody doesn't return it back to you, it's okay. Because guess what? You have already filled lost. up your own cup. You already are compatible. You're being what you were created to be. <laughs> right? So, yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop there because I can go on. I love, I love, 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 love this stuff. I can go on and on, but I'm gonna stop there um, so I can we can have some okay. some dialogue. Okay, a few things um, I want to share. Uh, here's I see Selena. She wrote, "It's not about what you get; it's about you being who you are." Absolutely, and coming into who we are is is a beautiful thing. That's what we we're talking about, Selena. Before you got here, we we're talking about that we are already the emanation and the embodiment of love. And so now it's just, you know, knowing what love is and feeling love. And and as Shermel said, love is a state of being, that we are already that. So we're just going to be love. Hey, hey, hey. So a couple of things that came to me that I wrote down and wanted to be sure to share. Compassionate communication um, for me is active listening. Listen attentively. Have eye contact, be um, engaged with whomever is talking. Allow them to finish their own thoughts. You may have thoughts about what you want to say, but it's more being compassionate is being showing up for, for someone and finding out what is it that they need, right? We don't always have to say something. 
We don't always have to say something. So sometimes you want to ask permission. Is it okay if I say, can I give this? Or would you like for me to just sit here and be with you? Mm -hmm. I love it when somebody asks me that. Thank you. Just don't go popping off at the mouth and saying whatever you want. I'm, I'm distressed. So um, help me. I, I, I prayed about this, y'all. So um, going on with some different things, but this is part of the transformation is that it comes up and now it's the actual doing. Okay. Another thing in terms of compassionate communication is be mindful of your tone, uh, be mindful of your body language. When I hear Ray's voice, that to me says, you're escalating things. And I have to now be a little cautious, like, where are we going here? Mm -hmm. We're no longer, I need the same space to be safe. So that's also part of com communicating passionately. Your posture, are you seated? Are you standing up? What are your hands doing? I talk with my hands. I move with my hands, but I know that some people get nervous with when they see hands moving. So sometimes, depending on who I'm talking to, I'm just going to rest my hands a little bit because I want my words to be heard and my voice. Okay? So those are some things that we can think about in terms of how we maintain our integrity in, in a situation and communicating compassionately for ourselves. And like Jamal said be before on uh, another call, if you don't feel like you are safe, you have 100% permission to leave. To leave. Don't ever stay in something that where you know you're being abused. Mm -hmm. Or if someone is triggering you to the point where you think you may lose it, leave before you do, because it's not worth it trying to prove this to somebody, something else. It takes a whole lifetime to build up a name. It can take a few seconds to tear it down. So uh, what we have is our name. What we ultimately have is our character. And our character, part of character is compassion. Mm -hmm. well, thank you for allowing me to say that. Um, Henry Henry said, you are welcome and worthy, Chanel. You are welcome and worthy. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Thank so you would so much. anybody else like to say something or even if you want to come on, on live with us and share with Chanel, we can do that. That would be a first for me. Um, but Chanel, are you okay with that? If we yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> so thank you all for being here. You you added some some more some more love juju to the room. So um talk to us. What you getting from this? Anything you want to expound on or add? Henry. Henry is a prolific and awesome writer and a man of God in my opinion. Oh, wow. He really possesses the character of uh of love. And he's very patient. He's an active listener. He looks for how he can boost up and lift people up. He has a, a room on Clubhouse called The Writer's Way. Mm. And for writers. And Shermel, who uh, she just completed writing a, a work, but tell us a little bit about it. It's not <laughs> yeah. I just wrote a, a booklet. It's it's a booklet. It's my first writing project. Um, I don't even know if I can consider myself to be an author. Um, it's not published, um, but it's a booklet. It's a, it's a guide to self-love, and I kind of just give you some tips on um, how to engage in self-love. And so um, I, I, what it was inspired, um, I just turned 50 uh, on the 24th. And um, I, it was, <laughs> it was inspired, uh, it was inspired, I was inspired to gift my guest at my birthday celebration this booklet. Um, just just as a thank you to me and just to leave an imprint on their on their hearts you know my my mission in life is just to really get people to to heal to be healed and whole and so it's just my way so that was my gift and so I am going to make it available to the public um I just have to kind of figure out how to do that um and so um for sale because I think it's really something that everybody needs and it's just the first of you know so much more uh that God is cultivating in me. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm.
go ahead and follow me. You can follow me um, here at, uh, I'm tagged in this, or um, you can follow me and I will definitely, and send me a DM and I'll definitely get it, get it over to you. I'm setting up my Shopify right now. I'm, you know, my first time doing it. So, uh, but I'm setting it up. So um, I have an extra one. I'll give it. How did you get an extra one? That's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it'll be made available for purchase um, probably sometime next week. Okay. Oh, I want to add that there's a comment that I missed before, but I caught it now. It's from Henry. He says it's always an inside job before it becomes a job outside of self. Yes, absolutely. And I'm a firm, 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 firm believer in that. I really am. I just, it just reminds me of the butterfly, you know, the butterfly is cocooned, you know, the butterfly is, it's mm. cocooned, it's by itself, you know, it's, it's it, everything that happens before it gets to blossom, it happens in a small enclosed space and I just think that that's just a representation of us as well you know um what goes on we have to work from inside out not outside mm -hmm. in, right that's right that's right mm -hmm. yeah Henry also added anger blinds our better judgment when we're upset is the best time for us to remain silent that is a good point a very good point yeah that helps to, as well um help us to manage our, our relationships mm -hmm. and most of all for ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's so important to also consider like some things are very upsetting, but it can be greater, more greatly upsetting if it's a work, isn't it? It's a work in progress. It's constant. When we do have offenses, I think it, uh, it's going to require us to really pull into our heart and love mm -hmm. and, um, and to ask ourselves, you know, to work on that forgiveness, to extend mercy and grace, mm -hmm. to be compassionate. Mm -hmm. um, there is also, I talked about in the Bible before the, uh, the, parable and there was also the good samaritan mm -hmm. there was a gentleman and that's in luke 10 verses 25 through 33 it said that there were three people who walked by the guy who was hurt on the side of the road mm -hmm. one was someone who was like them so i'm going to say we're very race instead of human race we're very um Right. Mm -hmm. So say that person was somebody of that same ethnicity and they walk past them. Right. Mm -hmm. And somebody else who may have been it was a it was a pastor or a priest did not even look, kept on going. We're not put blaming pastors or priests. I'm not doing that. However, this is somebody. The point is, sometimes we have expectations of people that they will show up in a compassionate way. And when they don't, we can feel downtrodden. But Jesus said, this is Jesus talking to illustrate to the, to the man who said, who is my neighbor? Mm -hmm. And it's for us to see that everyone is our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Everyone is our neighbor. Even our mother, our father, our children are our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Everyone is our neighbor. Mm -hmm. God created the earth. The Lord said the earth is 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 mine in the fullness thereof mm -hmm. so everybody is our neighbor and that's what we really really what have to get back to in love and loving ourselves and loving god and loving one another we have to know that god created us created us as love that god is love we are love and we are to love one another when we see someone else hurting that it is best that we act in a way that is compassionate act in a way that is loving even if somebody didn't give us that we innately know what love is even if we've been hurt how it's been hurt in in um I feel it in my stomach, then we just need to smooth it out. We still, we can't have the ability to say yes to being compassionate or to, or to say no. We cannot look and, and ignore someone's pain. But if someone is saying, ouch, say, here's a hand to help. 
And I also want to share that when we hear people celebrating something good, when you hear somebody celebrate something good, stick with them and say, awesome, well done. Don't start asking all kinds of questions about what you didn't do, just or even with yourself. Be with that win. So much going on, it seems tons always happening. Be with the win. Be with the win to celebrate the good. I want to, I want to, we only got a few more minutes, but I want to say something. Um, yeah. I hear what you're saying, um, but mm -hmm. I think I'm going to speak from experience. Um, Cause mm -hmm. you know that for me, I was super critical on myself. Um, and it was difficult for me to be compassionate towards others. I mean, I can yeah. be kind, I can, I can do kind gestures, but in order for it to be genuine and really flow from a genuine place, that was very difficult for me in the space that I was at, it, as, as being critical of self. It wasn't until I learned how to become compassionate with me that I found myself to be able to genuinely become compassionate to others. So there may be some people that like really have, are really struggling with their self-worth, their self-esteem, you know, just where they're at in life. And it may be a struggle for them to even be compassionate towards others because they feel so bad about where they're at in life. And sometimes even jealousy and resentment can even be seeping out of the heart, right? I would prefer for the compassion to be genuine than to not be genuine. And so if you want to flow from a genuine and authentic place, be, yeah. Learn how to be compassionate towards yourself so that it can genuinely flow out unto others. Yes. Now, you don't have to be mean towards the people. So if you don't have anything nice to say, then just don't say anything at all, you know. That's right. um, but we, I think I'm really pushing for authenticity. I really want people to be authentic in who they are and what they do and have it come from a place of love from a place of, you know, of who they are in their being and not just what what we're doing. It's time out for doing. It's time out for doing all of these things. But we got to learn how to be who God created us to be so that we can do what he created us to do. Right now, right. we're doing to try to be, but we should be in order to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we have five more minutes left. Thank you, Shermel, for sharing your personal and professional experience. Uh, we got a comment. Let me see here. Something came through. Um, I wait a minute. Did you see that? I can't see it. The last one I see is uh, okay. Thank you. I don't know. Let's uh, yeah, I mentioned the entire with Nisha. That that I'm not sure. Take seats and um, thank you, ladies. I definitely needed this. Well, thank you. We're, we hope it helped you. <laughs> um, the the thing is too piggybacking on what um, Shermel said. We're constantly working in progress, y'all. Well, these are things that we can can keep doing. That's the beautiful thing is that when we find ourselves in these situations or when you find yourself about to respond quickly, you can say, like how Shamel said, not start out with a you statement, mm -hmm. but see how you can reframe. I feel when mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. are, is your tone going to be up? If you know you're all already kind of riled up, mm -hmm. decide, is this the best time for me? Mm -hmm. Is this how I want to manage and care for my relation? How am I going to take care of myself right now? If, am I going to get too upset that that I can't, you know, stay in my love circle, you know, yes. and what how I know that love is and to be. Yes. So let love be your barometer. God said, all of, um, above all these things, love is the best. Mm -hmm. Love is the best. And I think really, if you're really seeking love, to know love, to be love, you will be love. You are already love. Mm -hmm. Now, Let's clean up that gooky gooky stuff and get it all out of our way, out of our minds, and out of our hearts. We're decluttering and cleaning out our hearts and our minds so that we can have more of who God called us to be, which is love. Please follow me or Shermel at Love and Lightings and at Shermel 
underscore Williams underscore LMFT. We're going to continue to keep bringing these, and there will always be more stuff. And we look forward to hearing from you and knowing how we can support you too. Jamel, any last words? Yes. If any of you all have any topics that you would like for us to cover, send either of us a DM. We're here every fourth Thursday of the month. Um, so if you have something that you would like for us to talk about, hit us in yes. the DMs. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for confirming that we will be here next August on the 4th. And Shermel, do you have anything coming up um, in terms of between now and then where people can find you, any podcast or anything um, like that? I have some things coming up, but I, um, I won't be announcing it. So you would have to follow me um, in order to get that, uh, get those updates. Um, I am going to, like I said, I'm going to make my booklet available for purchase. Uh, it will should be up by next week. So please follow me, Shermel okay. or Williams LMFT. And I'm also the CEO of Bittersweet Encounters, which is a group psychotherapy practice. You can follow us there for uh inspiration motivation encouragement and all of that good stuff and thank you that the suicide prevention lifeline is now a three-digit number 988 That's if you know anybody who needs it we're talking about commit compassionate communication give them that number 988 so that they can be reached quickly and reach some another compassionate listener on the other end Okay. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, guys.